I am upset, and I needed that. Pretty soon I'm going to have to turn this into a guitar gear channel, because photographers and photography gear enthusiasts must be some of the least informed hobbyists on the face of the earth. I think it's important to make this video. We're going to try to keep this one short, as I say every time. But this time I mean it. Um, we have an issue in the wildlife Fuji community. This is a small group, and we have a lot of stigma. We have a lot of hobbyists who are maybe shooting portraits or street, and they've decided they're interested in wildlife. So, you know, they've picked up various gear. Maybe they're shooting an XS10 or an XT3. Maybe they've got a 70 to 300 or even the 1 to 400. And I was there. I was shooting the XT3 with the 1 to 400, and it was not a great setup for wildlife. It was far behind on autofocus and um, just, you know, not an ideal kit. But the X-H2S has redefined the game. It is a complete innovative camera that offers things nothing else comes close to in this price point. Yes, you can, you know, you get an R6 II and get better low light um, but now you're losing all of the reach and your video capability is not the same and your sensor readout is much slower when it comes to, you know, rolling shutter and things like that. I've talked about how great this camera is and I think it really, you know, continues to defy my expectations um, what you can get away with with a hybrid system like this. And so that's why I'm so upset when people are spreading misinformation. And I've seen it on comments from my own videos from other reviewers, I've seen it from other channels. Um, I saw someone on Instagram today commenting about how DP Review, um, you know, tested wildlife settings and uh, and their feedback. And look, I love DP Review. I watch all of their stuff. I think those guys are funny and great and have good benchmarks. But they are not wildlife photographers, and like their photos and end results are not indicative of high-end wildlife photography. So they are doing the bare bones minimum to kind of test and give you an example. I mean, their most recent buyer's guide, they said that uh, the Lumix GH9 or G9 or whatever it's called, they said that that's the best value camera, and they cited that the Canon RF series doesn't have affordable lenses. What are you talking about? The RF 1 to 400 is one of the sharpest lenses and by far the most affordable lens you can buy at that level of quality for any camera, any system. That's why when people ask me, should I get an X-T5 and buy into like the Fuji 1 to 400 to get into wildlife, I emphatically say no. Go to Canon. If you just care about fast, reliable autofocus and you want a cheap, affordable body that can do the job well, the R10 and RF 100 to 400 is unmatched. Now, the Fuji X-H2S is still my baby. It's still my choice because on the flip side, if you want something that can do 4K 120 video, which for me is a complete non-starter, I would never give that up. I want amazingly fast readout speeds because not often, but sometimes I'm going to shoot something that demands it. What about like uh, fish jumping up fish ladders, you know, sa when the salmon are running or a hummingbird's wings or really fast things. I want to know that when push comes to shove and I ask my camera to do something intense, it can do it. The ISO is not an issue as I showed the other day in my video a couple days ago. If you do not crop, and why are you cropping if you're already shooting a crop sensor with a long range lens. The new XF 150 to 600 was built for this camera, the X-H2S. It's giving you 912 millimeters of effective reach. If you're still cropping after 900 millimeters, you've only got yourself to blame. Get closer or frame wider and don't crop. But if you're going to ask a crop sensor to crop more, and then you're gonna complain that the noise doesn't make sense. Like, again, what are you talking about? And these are things I've heard from Instagrammers. I've heard, again, someone on Instagram said that the XF 150 to 600 is not a good light, uh, good lens for low light compared to the 100 to 400. I owned the 100 to 400. I have compared it to the 150 to 600. Better Fuji shooters than me have compared it to that lens. The 100 to 400 is still expensive. It's only one stop faster. It's less than one stop faster if you zoom out, because remember, the new lens is not f8. Once you start zooming out, it goes down to 7.1 after 40 millimeters and it drops even more the shorter you get. So you're literally talking in some cases about one third of a stop or two thirds of a stop, and you're making excuses saying that the longer lens is not good for low light, way more reach, way sharper, 
better performance all around, better stabilization. It's just a way better lens. And the fact that brand new, they cost almost the same price is just like lunacy. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. And I've seen many people saying that the new lens is a low light lens. Uh, uh, you know, my, our beloved uh, late Fuji shooter, dude with a Fuji, now dude with an R10, who still shoots with his Fuji uh, pretty often actually, was out shooting owls the other day. Um, and he was down to like one tenth of a second shutter speed, handheld, getting sharp shots after dark. Uh, I've got a lot of experience shooting shorebirds and otters in the morning before the sun, uh, handheld at f8, sometimes on the tripod, sometimes on a ground pod, sometimes holding it for video, you name it. Uh, you can work with it. Yes, obviously a faster lens gives you more. And let's just pause for a second. I don't want any boomer nonsense in here about someone comparing my 600 millimeter f4. Get out of here. If you shoot a 600 millimeter f4, why are you on YouTube even paying attention to videos about uh, f8 zoom lenses that cost, you know, a sixth or a third of the price of whatever you're using? You're not talking about the same thing. I shot a 300 2.8 prime for a while and yeah, it was super sharp. It was super light. It was super great. It was also this big, weighed a ton, super unwieldy. It was not a lens I would ever take in the kayak. I hated taking it in the car. So yeah, it's in a brilliant lens. I would love to use that lens if I routinely shot cases where ergonomically that made sense for me, but it doesn't. So I think, look, the Fuji wildlife community uh, is very young, it's very new because they finally have this amazing, beautiful power body that is bringing things to the table that we didn't have before. So it's really important, I think, that if we see misinformation being called, we call it out because here's the thing. If you can't take the X-H2S and especially the new lens out together and get good photos, you are not a good photographer and you better get back to practicing because it's nothing on the gear. The autofocus does not miss the eye. Uh, the autofocus has, what, 500 points, I think, on this system. I don't have the specs in front of me. Lots of points, lots, you know, of work. I'm watching it right now, and I'm watching the dot track my eye. I'm shooting on the Sigma 33mm 1.4. Uh, I am six feet away from the lens, you know, trying something out. It's great to get these third-party autofocus lenses now. Uh, and I can see the dot perfectly on my eye. It's the smallest dot in the sensor that the camera has, and it's about the size of my eye. It looks like it's doing a good job. Hopefully it's not pulsing. If it is, it's a lens problem. But my point is, if you're shooting a little cardinal from 20, 30 feet away, that dot is the size of the whole bird's head. So how are you complaining that it only got, you know, the tip of the forehead versus uh, the eyeball? A cardinal is, how big is a cardinal? Here we go. We've got a puffer and a remote control. That's probably about the size of a cardinal. His eye is probably, I don't have anything that small. But just a little tip, just a little tip, this tiny little thing. So if you're shooting him six feet away, sure. If you're shooting him 10 feet away, you can't get the eye. <laughs> You have to hope, you hope it gets in the right thing. The dot's just not small enough. So if the dot's getting his head and the whole head is in focus, I also hate to say that at F8 or even F5.6 depth of field, you're not gonna notice that the, the uh, hairline or the, the crest is in focus and not the eye. It just, that's just not how things work. Um, I'm upset. I'm, this, is, this gets me upset. The Fuji X-H2S is phenomenal. It's a very powerful system. Um, the lens is great. Um, there are certainly things they could do better. I, I am jonesing to get my hands on someone's R3 and try that out because it'd be so funny to just shoot it like ISO 51,000 um, and just have a field day. Um, and yes, I think the only thing I would like to see improved a little bit really, other than the ISO dial, which is still dumb, um, is the video autofocus tracking. But like even the R3 is not perfect at that. Nothing is good enough that I would trust it when push comes to shove for video autofocus. I think that's the, the whole list of points. I'm just looking at my notes here. We talked about low light. We talked about F8. We talked about the autofocus. Yeah, nothing else of this size and weight does it. I get just as gear horny as anyone else. I look at every review from every manufacturer. I always think, what would it take to get me to shift? Um, and honestly, the only thing on the market I think right now that's even like remotely appealing um, in the expensive ballpark are the Nikon lenses are pretty awesome because no one else is really making like, you know, 
primes at that like one stop slower aperture for a way cheaper and lighter weight prime. Trouble is Nikon still hasn't come out with a mirrorless uh, D500 or D850. Um, if they do that and it's, let's say it's got a lot of the video capabilities of the bigger bodies, let's say the, the camera is not that expensive and the low light is good, it'd be awesome. You give me an R6 Mark II at the same price as the Fuji X-H2S and then you also give me amazing lenses for stills, that's a pretty enticing um, lineup. But unfortunately, Nikon doesn't have the bodies, and Canon doesn't have the lenses, uh, you know, and like neither of them at that department has the video capabilities. And part of the reason that you can get the video is the same reason why RED cameras, if you haven't noticed, they just came out with a super expensive 8K Super 35 cinema camera that costs, I think, 35,000 USD. And when you ask Red, they say, look, some people want the crop. They say it's not for everyone, but if you shoot sports, if you shoot wildlife where you want that reach anyway, then having this big wide sensor that's getting you all this data you're not using when your subject is small, the crop sensor makes a lot of sense. Super 35 is a huge format for cine and film stuff. So when people scoff at APS-C sensors, um, you're just a dumb sensor snob. You don't know what you're talking about. Full frame has its merits, mirrorless uh, versus DSLR both have their merits. Crop sensors have their merits. Uh, even Micro Four Thirds has their merits. It, like, I mean, every system has things they're really good at and things they're not as great at compared to the competition. For me, having shot just about everything and evaluating, I think the X-H2S is probably the best bang for buck in the middle. Uh, my Flickr link is below if you want to see shots with the camera. Uh, everyone got confused why I posted 20 shots of my dog at, at shutter speeds 1 20,000th. Uh, those are image quality tests for ISO. If you want to see sharpness, whether it's wild animals, captive animals, whatever, lots of tests on there that show you this camera shoots the pants off a lot of other things. And if you can't do it, it's not the camera's fault. It's your fault.